Hello, my name is Leon Turner uh, from Trend Controls and I'm here to talk to you today about uh, a new addition to the IQ Vision uh, framework. This, uh, this addition is a means to go and get data from cloud-based uh, servers so um, we can get information for weather, uh, sunrise, sunset, that sort of thing um, and many, many other things. So this is specifically called the HTTP client um, and it, I'm going to be using it today in conjunction with something from the JSON toolkit in order to get some data flowing. Now I've got a, a completely blank station here, it's only just been created. And the very first thing I'm going to do is add the HTTP client service under services. And that requires no more configuration. Uh, one thing it is worth worthy of mention is that this requires a, um, a, a live SMA agreement. So um, the update agreement to be running. Um, if it's expired, this will, this will stop working or refuse to work. So underneath drivers, I add uh, a new HTTP client network. And that allows me to add any number of uh, connections out to API sources. So I can have a variety, be they off to Transport for London to go and get tube train statuses or uh, where the latest, uh, the nearest Boris bike is, all these sort of things, including weather services. I'm only going to be doing one example here. So this is a new HTTP client device. It gets classified as a device. And for our purposes today, we're going to call it the Sunrise Sunset, which is what it's going to be doing. The host address is where we're going to go and get this from. Uh, and in our particular case here is the api.sunrise-sunset.org. That should work anywhere around the world. So it's a pretty good example to use to get this working. The path is anything underneath that um, URL whereby you know you need to put in a forward slash and then some other information. So in our case, that would just be JSON. And that will be specific to the website you're connecting to. The method, you'll see there's several options there. For us to go and get data, it is, it is the get method. If we were pushing data to somewhere else, then there are post and put methods available too. We won't be using those today though. It just so happens there is no particular um, authentication type for this particular um, URL, so we don't need to worry about any of that. And at this point, we can go away and ping it just to make sure it's alive, which it is. So it's up and running and we're connected to it already. Now for points, they are special kinds of points. And they come in as string points. And this is where all our data is going to be pulled into. If I hit OK. Now I'm going to call this um, Greenwich, uh, a district near London. Um, and the reason I'm going to use that is because it's a very simple place for me to locate on the globe. It is a string point. The host address again is api sunrise sunrise sunset.org and JSON. Um, not going to worry too much about we'll put it for a fast actually right so we have instantly some results if you look sunrise sunset da, 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 da. so that will be a generic one now there are means i can feed in various parameters to this request and the parameters really are the things which make this um, specific to what i want to do now for me mine are going to be uh, Lat for latitude and LNG for longitude. And they are latitude is as near as anything 4.5, and longitude is near enough zero, which is why I chose Greenwich. So now our information here has just changed in the window if you notice now that's because i've now given it parameters which zero this into greenwich rather than the default and i don't know actually know what the default would be but you can use this to get results from absolutely anywhere so now our string point actually has the results in it uh, and it's it, there are quite a lot of bits of information within that uh, extension as you can see so the read value is a long list of data now, we're not interested in quite a lot of that. I want to pull out some relevant bits and pieces, really. And in order to do that, I'm going to use various methods from the JSON toolkit. 
So first and foremost, I'm going to try and get everything I want out. Now that can be done with a component called a JSON path feeding a JSON DMUX router. So if I put both of those on the screen, I'm going to turn the JSON DMUX router into learn mode. And you should hopefully see why in a moment. Now, if I feed the out into the root, and the same again downstream. Now, what I need to do for the JSON path is actually give it some information as to where I want these results to come out from, or the you know where in the text we want to, to get this information. Now, you might be able to see that the word results there. So it's sort of nested um, results and then a, a load more information underneath the word results. Now, that's the piece I need to basically put in in my results. So dollar is the root and then, whoops, in lowercase, preferably. And then we save that. And hopefully it should get everything underneath that. Again, same information. Right, now what I'm going to do is clear the data that the string point has already got in it and rerun. So that worked rather well. So you can see instantly it routed through and it's it's taken all of the sub results from underneath that, that main heading, whatever that might be. And the JSON DMUX router has populated itself with a, a bunch of, of outputs. Those outputs, I can either put them straight on the screen or perhaps more easily uh, feed them into to something. So for example, a numeric writable for day length. So if I take that and link it into the day length, or oh, rookie error, it's actually a string, I suspect. Try that again. Yeah, there we go. So it's a string, not a not a number. No, I could obviously convert that if I needed to. <clears throat> uh, an alternate method is to use something a little bit more targeted. So we also have uh, another little piece of the toolkit called JSON find all. Now if I put that on the screen and there are lots and lots of these various little pieces and root that. This one finds things of a certain key. Now I know somewhere in that result set, because it was actually on the JSON DMUX router, there's a thing called Sunrise. I'm going to rename that so I know what it is. I'll do the same trick again in as much as I'm going to clear the results and then refire it. It's already done it for me. And you can see the output there, 7.11.45 a.m. And I'm going to do the same thing again and feed that into a string, writable. Um, this last little step here of feeding into a string writable just makes it much easier to put onto a PX page. If you try and use these various components to put the values on, um, getting the user rights correct to allow that to happen safely is, is a little bit difficult, or more difficult, I should say. And I'm going to do exactly the same again. Only this time I'm going to pick out Sunset. And you'll, you'll probably see it's changed straight away. There we go. So in there, so it's already picked out that information. Now that makes it very easy for me to then go and um, create a little graphics page and just basically drag these on to then start building my information. Dead easy. There we go. So that concludes our very simple little demonstration of the HTTP uh, client driver and also parts of the JSON toolkit. The JSON toolkit itself, you can use that direct to some of these API sources on the, the web, um, but the HTTP client is, is quite a simple way to get going straight away. So I hope that has proved useful. Um, if you need any more information about the HTTP client driver itself, or indeed the JSON toolkit, um, please uh, contact your trend representative. And that is all from me for now. Uh, I hope to talk to you again soon. Goodbye.